story of what was actually happening out there in the country, what was happening in terms of people getting involved in the political process. She felt more free to do that inside the campaign in the quote unquote propaganda unit than she did at the typical news organization where everything is, becomes about ratings and news cycle and political uh, back and forth. Um, more content, uh, uh, every step of the way, uh, we try to make the content as two-way as possible. So the Pluff strategy video, we asked for, people, for people's feedback on the strategy and allowed them to, to speak about it too. This is an example from the blog uh, where we had folks uh, interacting uh, in real time with our policy advisors. So uh, all three of these people actually were policy advisors on the campaign who now actually execute the policy in the White House. And we gave people the opportunity to interact with them and, and participate in the policy making process. Excuse me, and you can see uh, there were 2,500 comments just in this, in this short blog post uh, of people asking about foreign policy. Uh, so that's the, the, communications, uh, the communications piece. So uh, authenticity, transparency, participation, um, all applied to communications and building those relationships and making sure that they were two-way. The second big project was organizing. Organizing is a, a, a whole separate department of the campaign usually. So there's a, a political and field operation that puts uh, staff on the ground in all the different states where you need to build your organization uh, and, and seeks to build the uh, organization of volunteers. Uh, we had a, the mission of integrating the digital strategy into the typical uh, political organizing. Uh, and so we did that by lowering barriers to entry. Um, there are two parts of, of, of lowering the barrier to entry. One is uh, layering a digital and technology component into the traditional offline field program. So uh, our field organizers were given tools to post their events online. Now typically an organizer, if you're in the field for a campaign, you have to plan your event and then you have to call people up and, and hope that they're going to turn up and, and find um, the people who are going to who are going to show up. What we gave our field organizers were tools to post their events online, and then we promoted it for them on the front page of the website in email to the people who were local, uh, and it wound up getting a lot more people involved in the organization. The second part, though, was giving tools to all of the people who wanted to be part of the organization but didn't live anywhere near where our organization was. So if you lived in a state or in a town where there was no Obama campaign organization, no Democratic Party office, even in the general election, and there are a lot of them, we gave you the tools to do whatever you wanted to do uh, to help the campaign online by yourself uh, in your own community. So that meant providing not just uh, ways for people to sign up and, and express their interest, but to actually become organizers themselves. So we provided the same tools for uh, ordinary people who wanted to become leaders as we did for the traditional uh, field organizers and, and the staff. Uh, and so that was the events tool that was, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, allowing people to make phone calls and, and knock on doors from home. Uh, and, and all of this was based on the principle of lowering the barrier to entry. Uh, whether it's uh, for a campaign or most likely for a civil, or civil society and or nonprofit organization, drops into a community and actually helps bring people together around the notion that they have the power to do things so that they're not waiting for leaders to uh, you know, hear their voice, they're not waiting around for other organizations to make a difference, that you can get in a community and actually bring people together and recognize their own power to do something. So uh, that's something that he, if, if you read his first book, uh, Dreams from My Father, uh, or uh, some early interviews from him, which are, which are really very fascinating because he, uh, he wrote all this stuff about being a community, or community organizer before he ever got into politics. It's actually a, a pretty interesting window into his worldview. Uh, that's, that's something that ran, that, that ethos of organizing ran like electricity throughout the campaign. Uh, there's another video I'm going to try to play here, and hopefully you can hear it, uh, about him uh, talking about it.
this was actually a huge part of the campaign and something that we had to go through over and over again. With, you know, it, it was almost a, a, a sort of teaching moment for uh, people who wanted to be involved. You know, people would say, "Oh, I like Barack Obama. How do I help?" Not knowing exactly how to do that because so many people in our country participate in the process and the political process in a very passive way. They watch television ads. They, you know, watch the the pundits on the news and they get angry that they're that they're saying you know things that they don't like, but. Very uh, relatively few people actually have gotten out there, you know, with a clipboard asking people to register to vote. And so we had to uh, spend a lot of time training people, not just in the mechanics of how to do that, but in the uh, philosophy of the necessity that they do that. And so getting ordinary people involved uh, was was the was the key, and getting them involved in the key mechanics that actually made a difference in the process. So again, not just organizing and, and getting people to participate in ways that make them feel good, but also getting them uh, to participate in ways that, that make a, a substantive and concrete difference. Um, the third project I want to talk about is uh, fundraising. And this is one of those things that's not really that fun to do, uh, but it actually makes a concrete difference in the process, especially in our country. Uh, the political uh, process requires uh, a lot of money, and uh, it usually comes from people who are very rich uh, or from interests uh, who are... Uh, pushing that money into the process to get a certain outcome. Uh, the ethos of the campaign and the organizing sens sensibility of Obama uh, meant that, and also the, the strategic necessity of who our opponents were and, and how, how the political landscape shaped up, meant that if we were going to raise this money, we had to do it a different way. This was a guy who was completely new to the political process. He didn't have the network of uh, big donors and, and connections to raise a lot of big money very fast. And so uh, we wanted to do it a different way. And uh, what we found was that uh, by linking fundraising with this overall communications and organizing ethos, we were actually able to raise money in, dif in different ways uh, tactically, but in different ways uh, philosophically. Um, so when we were raising money, we were actually, uh, we didn't talk about the money. Uh, and so when we, when we were fundraising, we tried to treat it as part of the overall relationship. So that giving $5 or giving $10 became just another way that you could support the campaign. Uh, typically, uh, you know, fundraising is viewed, again, in a sort of silo inside the campaign. So the people who do it have very special skills. They have networks of big donors. Uh, and it was away from the organizing communications. We tried to integrate that tightly so that it all made sense together. So that when we were asking people for financial support, it was part of the overall story. Uh, and, and, and it was linked to you know, funding the different parts of the organization. So uh, one example of this was, um, a program that we called, uh, did, called Dinner with Barack. Um, it, it says something about the political process in our country that uh, when we said that uh, the candidate was going to have dinner with four regular people who had just given $5, $10, that it made front page headlines in the New York Times that, that was so un, not typical of, of how political fundraising worked. So what we did was we offered anybody the opportunity to sit down and have dinner. You know, typically these political dinners are very uh, exclusive affairs, you know, you pay you know, two thousand dollars for a plate of chicken or whatever, and you get to uh, spend time with the candidate. Uh, instead, we offered it uh, to everybody, and uh, when we when people gave five dollars, we actually asked them to tell their story about why they were giving the five dollars. And it's actually a very powerful, uh, powerful thing, you know, when when you think about it. If somebody's sitting down and typing their credit card information and their address information into the website, there's a reason that they're doing that. Right at that moment, because you know that's something that um, is very personal. You're you're putting a lot out there, and you're taking the time to do it. And so what we found was that asking people why they did that right after they did it uh, was actually part. It created a treasure trove of information about uh, why people were involved in the campaign, how they felt about the political process, um, and how they felt about Barack Obama. So what we did was we took four of these people uh, and sat them down uh, with Barack Obama to have this dinner. Uh, and again, this was something that you know we raised a lot of money because a lot of people wanted to do that. But it was also something that became about organizing, because so many people wanted to do that. It helped build a new list of supporters in the different parts of the country so that our field organization could get in touch with them. And it also created these incredible stories. And so we used these stories that people would write after they clicked donate, uh, and we promoted it and said, "This is the kind of this is the kind of person who is." Uh, supporting our campaign, and these stories of our donors became something that we told over and over and over again on our blog. Uh, we also uh, filmed the dinner, so we created this content that was um, a very intimate portrait.